want to welcome each and every one of you straight here on streamingpraiseradio.com as we, uh, yeah, you're not seeing us, right? <laughs> <laughs> Those of you looking at us on Facebook, you're thinking, what is going on? Where are these guys? But Get we're right, right here. We're right here. And uh, we want to thank you all for joining us today um, live on Streaming Praise Radio as we bring to you um, Rebuilding the Black Family. Um, and as you listen right here on Streaming Praise Radio, you're probably wondering, okay, how are we build, rebuilding the black family and how do we really do that? But see, I'm not the one that really spearheaded this stuff, so I'm going to just pass it right over to the, the gentleman himself, the man of the hour, none other than Pastor Carl. <laughs> you go right ahead, sir. A little you, too you. colorful there. <laughs> Thanks so much, Claremont. Great to be here. Great to be with you. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Rebuilding the Black Family. Thanks, Claremont, for doing this with me. Really appreciate you, your good heart and wonderful giftings. But again, uh, how was your week so far? My week... Um, busy? Uh, Demanding it was busy. As usual. Yeah, it's running up and down, the, mm -hmm. trying to get this together, get mm -hmm. that together, fix mm -hmm. this together, and still try to rebuild me. Of course, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's good. Still try to rebuild me in the process, and um, you know, as I, as I'm doing that, I, I I thank you for actually sending me that uh, information about the movie yesterday. I'm just barely watching a little piece of it, All right. and I said I have to mention this little piece. You see, you shouldn't turn you, me on. Like hold, it, hold it, hold it, hold it, right there. Like just that. about <laughs> hold it right there. <laughs> Now, I was going to mention a movie. I was okay, go ahead. A go clip. Ahead. Yeah, please. That, uh, something that I took out from that mm -hmm. um, about the dog chasing the cat. Mm -hmm. You remember that part? Probably not. No, no, no. go but, ahead. He said that he says there was this skinny dog mm -hmm. chasing after the skinny cat because he saw the skinny cat as lunch. So he chased the cat and the cat took off. No matter what he did, the cat jumped all over the place and couldn't catch the cat. So he says, he went to the dog and he says, how did you let the cat get away, man? He said, you know, I saw the cat as lunch, but what the cat saw was his life. There you go. And I thought, That's a that is job. powerful. Mm -hmm. So I said, I had to mention that. I got it. I got it. It's a matter, of, <laughs> well, it's saw, a matter of motivation. You then, know right? what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He That's saw good. That's good. life. Mm -hmm. And while the other one only saw lunch, mm -hmm. and he says basically, he's saying, you know, some people have it at their fingertips, so they treat it casually. Mm -hmm. But for those of us who see it as a life-changing thing, we go after it with all our That's people. excellent. So I told I'm, you you were premature. Oh, You're going to have to bring that back up. I'm going to bring it back about up. About 10, 15 minutes from now. That's <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Now, let me just go back again. Thank you so much, those of you who've been tuning in, following, sharing with us. Uh, we particularly appreciate the feedback, the comments some of you have been giving. Uh, we appreciate that. We uh, thank you for taking the time to do that. It helps us to know that we're doing, we're helping you, that we're truly encouraging and inspiring. And, and being a blessing to you because that's what this is about. Uh, but we are focusing on rebuilding the black family. We're going to be discussing uh, various uh, well, well, critical factors, I call it, to and essential things that are necessary to rebuild the black family. Uh, we're not negative. We're very positive. But we're looking at we want to see that the black family, it's a conviction God's spoken to me about, about what I'm supposed to do. And part of my call is to focus on the black family and to help the black family realize its purpose and, and destiny in the earth as part of the human family. Family. Uh, now, last week, we last couple of weeks, we talk on, uh, we spoke on singleness and the importance of singleness, and I'm sure we're going to touch on some of those things in the weeks and months to come. And uh, for those of you who would rec would like more information, I did do a teaching at our church called on the um, <coughs> being single and loving it, and I talked about a four or five week. Uh, almost about a month and a half, a month and five, really five weeks on that. So you can go to our website, foundationforlife.ca, and uh, download those messages for free. So, you know, again, for your timeliness, whenever you want to listen to it. But we really believe it's going to really be, you'll find it helpful and rich and informative and inspiring. And those of you who are single, you'll really be helped in on what to focus on in the time of your singleness. Now, next week, uh, I'm, I'm putting a plug for next week because I'm having a sense that we're going to really focus on one of the most uh, critical factors to rebuilding the black family. Um, those of you who have men in your lives, really tell men to tune in on that. You were touching on part of it, uh, I think, last week or the week before. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to really focus on that, and I'm going to issue a call to men. Uh, I tell you, men are critical. You are essential. 
uh, to rebuilding the black family and taking us up to a higher level in the plan of God. And so really tuning into rebuilding the black family next, we're going to focus on one of those critical f uh, factors. Now also next week, well, this weekend is Canada Day. We'll probably touch on that on the end of the yeah, program. Yeah, that's right. But uh, 150, um, 150 years. 150 I'm years. I'm hoping to live that long. Yeah, you're hoping that's good. Well, I believe with you. I agree with you. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so that means you're still a young man. I was thinking about that the other day, that you realize in, the, um, in previous, well, way back Adam's times and mm -hmm. other people who lived hundreds of years. Correct. And I thought, realize when they were 100, that's like a teenager. Yes. You think about I'm that. Still, I'm still in my teens. <laughs> you're in your so teens, man. I'm still in my teens. <laughs> All right, well, you <laughs> stay, so stay I'm, young, I'm, I'm my friend. Young, stay I'm young. young. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. Stay young. Well, today what we're going to focus on is this. Claremont, I was um, at church. We had a movie night. My wife, I was inspired to have a movie night every now and then, kind of quarterly. And so she normally will put on a certain movie that's already shown but really was inspiring and really something she found really uh, helpful to the general population. Right. And so one of those movies was uh, called The Queen of Katwe. Mm -hmm. K-A-T-W-E. It was in the uh, movies, limited uh, view you know, theaters, um, but an excellent movie. We saw it again last Friday, mm -hmm. but this time when I was, and it's about, let me just say a little bit about those of you who don't know uh, what Queen of Kato is about. It's about a, um, a girl called Fiona. And, and her family that live in the slums of uh, Katwe in Kampala, Uganda. And of course, it's just a, just a, a, just a art-wrenching, really challenging, desperate, uh, poverty-ridden existence. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's a missionary, she meets a missionary by the name of uh, Robert, I believe his name was, and he runs a, uh, a kind of a, he, he teaches children how to play soccer he also has a teaches them how to play chess which Correct. is new for many of them there right. and so um somehow she really gets a knack for playing chess and uh obviously there's a genius to her because she's able to see several plays way down into the future you know as far as far as the game is concerned mm -hmm. and so she has this passion she develops this fascination with the game of chess and really is committed to it and invests herself in it. And so the coach, uh, Robert, we realize, you know, there's something to this girl. She's really mm -hmm. got a skill for this. And he endeavors to help her to develop her skills as far as he can. And then eventually, um, you know, through ups and downs and different things, she eventually competes in some, uh, let's say, uh, I guess, provincial or state and then national and then international uh, championships where she does really well and really changes the future of her family. Mm -hmm. And so it's a movie of hope, of courage, of determination, of perseverance, a tremendous movie. If you can buy it on DVD or Blu-ray, I'd, I'd encourage you to get it, but uh, excellent movie. And what we want to do is, I was watching it a second time, um, I was just, I was just felt there are certain things that uh, came out at me at when watching the movie, so I noted different points. That's what I want us to do today, is really look at some of those points that I noted, because I really believe that it contains certain life lessons that will help all of us. And so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to well, go through that and, just, well, and then we just, can talk on that. Just to, to let the listening audience know, um, I was only able to watch 40 minutes of it mm -hmm. because I only got it this morning. Yeah. Gotcha. So I watched 40 minutes of it, and the first 40 minutes is extremely interesting. Why is it interesting? Um, uh, just about four years ago, five years ago, I, mm -hmm. I think, um, I was in, in, in um, Kenya, in Bangoma, Kenya, which is about, uh, if I'm not mistaken, what they told me is about 140 miles from the border of uh, Uganda. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the living conditions are basically the same, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I was in... Um, the in the compound that I was staying in, and which is quite interesting, as we come out of the compound, it's right into the slums. And I thought, like, okay, the, the compound is in cage, is well, well, enclosed, so to speak. Mm -hmm. and it's, it, the, the fence is right around it's high, mm -hmm. and just as you come out, right into the slums. And I'm thinking, wow, this is interesting. How life is. It's, it's not like it's three streets down mm -hmm. it's Got right there right there um and looking at this movie reminded me of when i was in uh kenya and see the lives and the way how people live and uh even watching the little boys 
that come up to you begging. Mm -hmm. And I was told, don't pay attention to one of them because mm -hmm. from the moment you start paying attention to one, you see about 10 of them coming at you, mm -hmm. right? And they just swarm, swarm around you. And, you know, it's heart-wrenching because when you look at it and you wonder um, how... Uh, how can you help them? How can, what, what can you do? Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I notice about them, though, is that the hunger for knowledge. That was always my the interesting thing. They all want to go to school to learn. Mm -hmm. While we here in North America, sometimes even in the Caribbean, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. There's is how can I get more knowledge? And, and, and I, I often, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I, I, and when I was looking at the movie, that's all I remembered. Like, mm -hmm. same thing. Like, how do we get more knowledge? Because this was the, I, I think the, the girl. Um, Fiona. Fiona. Yeah. I think she's a star of the, of the yeah. right. And, and her thing was getting knowledge. Yeah. And that, that, I'm thinking, wow, in spite of the fact that at the beginning of the movie, they told her how smelly she was mm -hmm. and the kind mm -hmm. of stuff, that didn't it's her for one second exactly. she just went home and got cleaned yeah. up and come back now let me say this though i want to make sure we understand this is that even though we were describing the setting of this particular person it's mm -hmm. a real story it's a real person that the movie was taken after in fact espn did an article on on her mm -hmm. life and that's what inspired the movie Mm. So it is a very true story. But I need to say something, though, just to make sure we don't get misunderstood. Um, because oftentimes the way Europe and North America has portrayed Africa, mm -hmm. they intentionally called it the dark continent for a reason. Oh, okay. Okay. It was be, again. It was to make sure you had a negative connotation, a negative picture mm -hmm. of Africa. Okay, I could remember that. And so, if we're, we're much of Africa, think mm -hmm. about this now. Mm -hmm. That that's only one part of Africa, Katwe mm -hmm. in Kampala. Not all of Uganda is a slum. Exactly. All throughout Africa, there are beautiful cities. Yes. However, many people in North American Europe, even a lot of black people, their perception of Africa is very negative. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of the pictures they see. Correct. Does that make sense? And yes. so the rhetoric, the, um, the continual dialogue of a negative perception, negative pictures, it feeds the narrative mm -hmm. that these are a dark, backwards people. So I want to make sure that we don't, we're not into that. No, 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 I know no, no. way better than that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And so, again, um, no, Africa is not the dark continent. Again, it was done to keep, to, to make sure a people were subjugated and never looked at possibly because why, uh, looked, not looked upon in a positive light because if they're not, you can take advantage of them, you can oppress them, you can rob from them without the world knowing. All right, so let's move on. Can I move on? We yes, good? go right ahead. Yeah, we're good. All right, so let me begin by saying this. So some lessons that we saw in that movie, and I believe you already began to pick up on, which I believe were really excellent. And the first one, um, and again, that's not necessarily in order, but one I wrote down was everyone has talents and abilities. Absolutely. So you saw this a young girl in a desperate situation, mm -hmm. but look at that. She had a talent. And I noted here, many of the greatest talents are hidden in the worst of circumstances. Absolutely. See true. that? Like gold in, gold in a gold mine. Yes. But it has to be explored, right? It has to be tapped into. Right. And so, again, you know, we, inspire to be, we, we desire to be inspired. You realize everyone listening, everyone watching, you've got talents and abilities. You might not be aware of it, just like Fiona was mm -hmm. in the Imagine, she a chess, a chess champion. Do you think she ever dreamed that? course not but it was there the potential was there she didn't know it yes which means there are talents and abilities in every one of you mm -hmm. every one of you listening okay. watching today i'm telling you, you've got talents skills and abilities so remember god didn't create you without purpose didn't create you without abilities absolutely see that so i really want to you know uh, mention that to begin now I know another thing that is just tied to that. So genuine love and care for an individual or for a child in this case, she's only about 10 years old when the movie begins, but genuine love and care oftentimes unlocks a gift, talent, or ability. So yes. Robert, the cat, you know, Robert. Robert, yes, Robert. So his, um, his care, he didn't realize what he was, you know, that he would tap into and he would discover. Mm-hmm someone who'd become, we could say, the queen of Katwe, you know, who'd yes. become a champion chess player. He never realized that. However, his desire, 
is love for children, mm -hmm. is desire to help them, even through a soccer game, right. through teaching them to play chess. Mm -hmm. See, that was the key that unlocked that gift or the realization of that gift in her life. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So, so think about this now. So how many times, um, that means there are people around you, there are people in your family, your care, your love for those individuals, you don't, particularly young children, you don't realize what you could be involved in. Mm. So that means the opposite is true then. Our lack of love, our lack of care can keep a child's gift unlocked, unrealized. You see that? So that's why, and I believe just in, in working with young people for years, particularly in the past, I kind of did my own little surveys, mm. and I discovered that most people had a dream, a talent, a vision very early in life. It True. wasn't after they went to school, you know, after 20 years, very early, sometime 7, 8, 9, 10, mm -hmm. 11, 12, in teenage years, they had something in their hearts they wanted to do. That's why young people, as older parents or people, we've got to be very careful the environment, the words we speak. Uh, we've got to make sure we, we, um, we help to cultivate the gifts in our children by the right environment. I know you, you, you want to say something, so go ahead. <laughs> no, I, two things actually. I, 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 I wanted to go back to mm -hmm. when you says um, lo the, the love and yeah. the attention mm -hmm. can. Mm -hmm. um, it's not always. Of course, yes. It's not always. And, and I want to make sure that people mm -hmm. understand it because some people say, well, I got all the love of everything that I have, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. whatever the case may yeah. be. Because yeah. um, if we go back to somebody like Oprah, Mm -hmm. um, who didn't right. receive mm -hmm. that kind of attention, mm -hmm. but still mm -hmm. she looked what what she did today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, looking at the fact that um, what you just said about um, be careful what you say, and I mean parents sometimes say things to children probably with good intentions, yeah. but with the lack of knowledge on how to execute uh, or even to speak into their lives is something that they are lacking, mm -hmm. and. It's more damaging than doing any good because I could even refer to myself. Mm -hmm. I, you know, um, my mom was a wonderful woman. She worked hard, mm -hmm. but she just didn't know how to speak into our lives. So when I would, I had suggested when I was, I remember when I was young and I said I wanted to be a doctor. And she says, no, 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 that's going to be too hard for you. And she was just thinking that I might not be able to cope with the mm -hmm. pressure. Because at the time, and I mean, schooling in the West Indies, for those of you that are listening or even watching, will understand schooling is not like North America. But back in the day, man, you, you, you didn't get a, a, a mark right or, or you didn't spell right or you didn't do your math right. You get a whooping for that. You probably didn't get no, that. No, I didn't get that. Yeah, in the West Indies, it was I like that. that. Yeah. You get a whooping for not spelling right, mm -hmm. for not doing your math right. You, mm -hmm. If you have a certain, and sometimes the teachers are brick pretty liberal if you get less than uh, let's say you could get less than out of 10 mm -hmm. you're allowed to get three marks fail mm -hmm. but you didn't mm -hmm. do right you're okay mm -hmm. but anything below that you get lashes get it right the next time right so I think for most of us and I mean many of us have, mm -hmm. have succeeded right course, yeah. but for somebody like myself I thought about the lashes coming if I get one wrong so I'm not thinking about getting it right I'm thinking oh my god I'm gonna get lashes Gotcha. So you focus on the negative more than you focus on the positive, yeah, right? Yeah. And because of that, I was a little slower in learning, so to speak, especially when it comes to spelling. I mean, mm -hmm. I was bad at spelling. I hated spelling. Because I'm always thinking if I spell the word wrong, I'm going to get a lash. So why even make an effort to even want to spell, right? And it was a bad thing for me because, so my mom thought of that angle that, you know, mm -hmm. you can't do it. So just don't. Gotcha. But she didn't understand what she was doing. So I literally, that I took that to heart. Mm. That there's not much I can do. Took me a while to be able to figure out who I. Re and looking back now and talking to some of my friends and people who know me from when I was youth going to school, says we never saw you like that. You always look so confident. Hmm. So I had the the facade. I come out and smile, look pretty, and mm -hmm. try to look confident. But inside of me, there's this wall that is falling apart and the fear that is crippling me that oh my goodness my hands became I used to sweat a lot of my hand my hand is all part of the fear being mm -hmm. able to just to do this I would never dream of that mm -hmm. I, 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 I sometimes I sit and I think I wish my mom was alive to see this today speaking in public I started singing in public first and I remember one of the things singing in public my mom was a my mom was a joker in her own way um, she never clapped when I sang 
growing up. When I sang, she, everybody else was clapping, she wouldn't clap. Mom, how come you didn't clap? Well, I don't want to think that, you know, I don't want people to think that I'm boasting over my child. Oh, okay. But as, again, it's mm -hmm. knowledge. Okay. But for her, she's proud on the inside, mm -hmm. but just didn't want to feel that she's over. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it, that way, it kind of retards a little bit. It takes mm -hmm. a, a struggle to get past that. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I might look confident, but inside of me, I'm thinking, if my mom didn't think I'm doing right, I'm... But you know, there's, there's something, you said a couple of things there where you put on a facade, a facade, you said, yeah. of being confident, but on the inside, it was the opposite. Yeah. So we could say what was inside you was in large part formed by your mom. Correct. You know, by the words she yeah, spoke. And, words I think, she spoke and that's why we've all got to do better in that area, because you are forming, you are shaping your children mm -hmm. every day by, the, by your words by your confidence or lack of confidence mm -hmm. in them, and that's communicated through how you relate to them, how you interact with them, what you say to them. Well, right? I, have a li I have a little girl, uh, <laughs> and um, her sister had gone away for four years and come back, and we are sitting down, myself and the four siblings chatting, and the sister's looking at her, and she says, oh my goodness, you've grown, and look at you. She says, yes, I'm confident. I got it all from my dad. Oh, look at that. I'm thinking... You got, she said, yeah, my dad tells me all the time, there's nothing that can't stop me from doing what I can do. So, And she has developed, as a matter of fact, all my children develop because I tell them there's nothing in this world you cannot do. So they have this confidence and nothing stops them, especially this little one that I have here. She's, mm -hmm. I mean, I think she's just oozing, as we say, oozing with machismo, man. She's just like, overconfident and she just speaks, behaves, and carries herself that way. Um, some things that she cannot figure out, she says, I'll figure it out eventually. That kind of confidence. I think to myself, man, if I was her age, had that kind of confidence, mm -hmm. the things I would have been doing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I pass it on to my children. They need to be what I wasn't. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Now, the next point, thank you so much. Now, the next one I wrote was it, the importance, one's gifts and talents. And this goes for everybody, not just for children. Right. But there's something else I got to say. Okay, go ahead. When you were speaking about the, um, <laughs> um, the upbringing in Guyana and... Um, the discipline. Mm -hmm. There was a strong discipline, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not saying all of that was right. I'm not saying that. No, no, and no. I'm, I'm not condoning abuse. Mm -hmm. However, and a lot of that wasn't abuse. A lot of it was just strong discipline, discipline. Correct. where the children knew who the teachers were correct, and who they were. Mm -hmm. They were the students. And I'm saying that's a far cry from much of what we're hearing in North America. That's why I have to yeah. allude to it, in that instead of the teachers, it seems, you know, running the, um, the, the classroom, it seems like the children are running the classroom, and that's a recipe for the disaster. And so while people might laugh at your upbringing or even my upbringing, then to think on the discipline of our background and classes, of, in, our, in England, our um, ed mistress, she had a cane. Well, she had so, a cane. Yeah, that, she that, yeah, a yeah. <laughs> so what she did, you were going, if you were called mm -hmm. to the Ed Master or Ed Mistress's offices, mm -hmm. you're going for one, you knew you were going for one of two reasons. She had the cane, you were going to get it, the, the girls would get it on their hand, yeah. and the boys would get it on their behinds. Yes, yes. Or, if you're fortunate, mm -hmm. like me, mm -hmm. you were going to get rewarded for something. Uh -huh. And so she had, as I'll never forget, you know this thing you, you never forget? Yeah. I was called down to the um, school office one day. Mrs. Pullum mm -hmm. was her name. No, I remember her name. This is way back. I mean, I, I, I couldn't be more than 10. So uh, I thought, you know, fear and trembling. Boy, you want to know, boy, what have I done? I mean, I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking, like you said, about the cane. But I, must, I did something. I don't remember what I did. And she had this big jar of candy. Ooh. I got to put my hand in and oh. take the candy out. And you know, back then, <laughs> everything looks big to you, so this oh, yeah, thing yeah. looks really big. I realize now it's probably only maybe that high yeah. and maybe that big, but to me, it looked like this big and this high, you know, but I got rewarded when I get... So anyway, getting back, don't want to get sidetracked in here. <laughs> the issue we get, is this, the issue of discipline mm -hmm. that so many of our peers and so many of, of, our, of our generation turned out very well in spite of some of the strong discipline. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And yeah. so it forced you. You had parameters around your life. And I think some of that has been so decried and put down in this day and age that we're reaping the whirlwind for it. So let's get him back to number two. So number one is this, that everyone has gifts and talents. As uh, Going back to that m lessons from the movie The Queen of Katwe. Mm -hmm. The uh, second one was, um, and we said in that genuine love and care, 
can really go a long way to developing that. And we heard your story, which is really excellent. And then number two is this, develop your best talents and abilities. So it's one thing to realize your talents and abilities, but then develop them. So in the movie Fiona, what does happen? She realizes she has this gift. And what does she do? She starts developing it. Mm -hmm. She spends time. At night when other people are sleeping, what is she doing? She's, she's looking at it. She's studying the game. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to have talents and abilities. Many people fail, not because they don't have a talent and a gift and an ability, but they never developed it. Correct. They never developed that talent, gift, and ability. So it takes time. You've got to you know, invest in it. Uh, put money into it to develop that gift and talent. Mm -hmm. you know, the scripture says a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great people. So we've got to remember that. Another thing I wrote while I was watching is this. A dream is something you want and desire more than anything else. Hmm. So now think about that. A oh, dream oh, is yeah. something you want and desire more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes you've got to look at are you really pursuing what's in your heart? And so you'll have a lot of people will try to talk you out of your passion, mm -hmm. but the importance is you've got to know what's in your heart. What were you made for? So what when are you someone tries to talk you out of your passion, is, mm -hmm. are they really trying to talk you out of it, or are they just thinking, well, for example, mm -hmm. um, let's say your son or daughter comes to you and says, I want to be a musician. That's all I want to do. Well, it's okay. You go to college, you study to become a musician, but have a backup. Because they're thinking, there's so many musicians around, you might not be able to make it, so mm -hmm. have a backup. But if you had said, I want to become a doctor, they wouldn't tell you to have a backup. So is it really that they're trying to talk you out of it, or they're trying to be cautious because of what they foresee that may happen um, if you don't become successful? I think you've answered your question, and it's both of them. Okay. So either because in well, you know could be one or both of them at the same time, I, I th but let's look into that a little bit if you don't mind. Let's go yeah, and let's explore yeah. that a little bit, which is because I think it's a great point. <laughs> you know, obviously as parents you love your children, mm -hmm. you want that you want to see them to see the be, be the very best. Correct. You want them to have a life better than yours. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the desire for every parent. Um, but I think what happened we're so shaped by our environment. We're so shaped, let's say even our school system, it's almost like we're, we're reproducing the same person. Mm -hmm. So that means they've got to go to college, they've got to go to university, mm -hmm. they've got to do this. And, and instead of realizing we're all individuals. Mm -hmm. And so I think to maybe explore some things you just said is this. I think when a child comes to you, it's incumbent upon us as parents to really know what's the heart of this child? What's in this child? What's motivating them? What are their gifts and abilities? So even from a child tracking, what are their abilities? Mm. What's their propensities? What do they have a real aptitude for? And if you compare two children to, to one beside each other, they're never identical. True. So that's the problem, yeah. I think, is when we're trying to make one child or everyone the same. Same, yeah. Or we're defining success for all the same. Mm -hmm. So let's say this child you said, okay, is, is a, is a, wants to be a musician. But we need to discover, is that just a whim? Is it just something they, they want to do because another friend is doing it? Mm -hmm. do, they, uh, do, do they have any talents in those areas? Well, if the, if the answer is no in all three, mm -hmm. then you do need to have that serious conversation. You know, you know son, uh, daughter, um, let's talk about this. And, may, and then steer them in the area of their gifting, talent, and passion. Correct. Does that make sense? But yes. the thing is this, I, I think what throws some of that off is when we're, we're too um, maybe conditioned to trying to make everybody or making our children look like someone else or defining success the same way. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what they're passionate about. Find out their gifting and move them in that direction, even if it looks different from other people. Correct. For example, imagine uh, Fiona wanting to be a chess player. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm saying, how are you going to make money in chess? Some people can say, well, there's a lot of starving musicians. Correct. Right? And, and other things, we can go down the line. The thing is this, though, is suppose that's something they're really passionate about. I think it's really doing the homework with them, not be sloppy about it, not be irresponsible, but have that conversation and several conversations to find out now, is this where you want to go? And then lay out a roadmap, okay, how are we going to get there? Correct.
right? But not. But the thing is this: we've got to really be careful that we don't. We're not dream thieves or dream killers. Yes. Right. And we could take a long time on that, but, but we won't. So a dream is something, but going back to where you, we stopped off here, a dream is something you want and desire more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going to motivate you. So in, in going, is, is that child really passionate about this? Is what they're going after? Do, or do they have the desire to really give everything for it? Now think about it, even the greatest, the greatest athletes, the greatest musicians. The thing is this, it wasn't just someone opening a door for them. Most of those people, the passion was shown by how much work they put into it. I, I was looking at uh, something last night, I don't remember, and, and along the same lines. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, there's a, a, a young boy who wrote, I forget who the, who the famous writer was, he wrote to me, he says, I want to be a writer. And I want you to tell me or teach me how to become a writer. And here are some of mm -hmm. my manuscripts. And the writer re rep replied to him and said, if you get up the first thing in the morning you think about is writing, and the last thing before you go to bed is writing, you're already a writer. Because the passion is passion there. Passion is there. Excellent. That and is and excellent. I thought of that when you said that. I'm like, yeah, that's true. The first thing you get up, what do you think about? Yeah. And the last thing before you go to bed, what do you think you're about? Passionate. Exactly. You're passionate. You're very passionate about it. Mm -hmm. You're already there. So if the passion's there, let's go on a little bit mm -hmm. on that. If the passion's there, then what can happen is this, as, as our parents, you can, we've got to be very careful, if someone's really passionate, then someone in authority, like a parent, mm -hmm. if they say, oh, you'll never do that, you can't do that, then what you can do, you can end up killing that person's dream. Yes. Yes. You see what, because then, what happens, they've got this desire, this passion is consuming them, but someone in authority over their life, mm -hmm. whose voice they believe and value more than anything else, tells them. That's why parents are so critical. That's why teachers are critical. Mm -hmm. They can set, they can break people's um, vision and dream, if you will. You see that? Yeah. And so I remember that too. In grade nine, my teacher told me, "You can't take, um, you, you can't take advanced courses to go to university." They actually told me that. Wow. Well, suppose parents believe that. Mm -hmm. Then they'll say, "Okay, they'll agree. All you need is agreement. Yeah. Negative or positive, yeah. and you'll act upon it." Thank God I didn't, I didn't listen to them. <laughs> and so what I'm trying to say is, yes, yeah. so vision, dream is really important. Now, so we said um, a dream is something you want more than anything else. That's mm -hmm. a great statement you made by that. Absolutely excellent. Now, a dream will take commitment, effort, time, perseverance, and much sacrifice. So those are things now, once that you do have dreams, you have a passion, that's going to take time. It's going to take all these things. It's going to take commitment, effort, time, perseverance. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some sacrifice. Now, you saw that in the movie because, um, of course, and I'm going to get into that, but the thing is this. this the, look at um, the sacrifice of the mother. You were telling me that the, the real hero in, the, in that movie was not so much Fiona, the mm -hmm. daughter. It was the mother because what she did She's the one, remember the father had died? Mm -hmm. She was now leading the family. Correct. Now, she had to make sacrifices. Once she, what she did, Fiona needed to, um, she would have the light on. Of course, that was oil, gas, oh, kerosene. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she sends a, sells a valuable garment to buy kerosene so that she could stay up, Fiona can stay up at night and um, read and study chess. What is it? I, as I said, I only was yeah, able to watch only. 40 minutes of exactly. the show. Well, I'm going to look at the show anyways because mm -hmm. I want to see the end of it for myself mm -hmm. and see how it, it unfolds. But what I liked at, at the beginning about for Fiona is that um, when her coach, Robert, mm -hmm. asked her, mm -hmm. so how did you learn those? Well, what did, you read? did you read my books? She says, I can't read. Yeah, and she says, I can't read. He said, so it all came naturally? So he started watching her from yeah. that point. Exactly. He realized he, he, he noticed something about her. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as you rightfully said, you know, when you see it, and you as an, who is an authority, whether it's a parent or a teacher, our, our responsibility now is how to foster that and bring yeah. it out and Excellent. bring it right out. Excellent. Yeah, so Excellent. I was looking at that too. And, wow, she can't read, but her mom, it, 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 the lack of being able to, to, to read did not hinder her from That's her good. true abilities and talents. Excellent. That's what I looked at. So in, so in some cases, it highlighted how talented she was. Yes. That's excellent. Yes. That is excellent. So again, it's going to take time. So there will be disappointments along the journey of your dream. Mm -hmm. So all of these just points that came up. Uh, losing 
does not mean you're a failure. That was a quote. That actually was a quote. Mm -hmm. So she loses a tournament and she's dejected. She says, I'm gonna get, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And the coach tells her, losing does not mean you're a failure. So in moving in along the lines of your dream, your passion, your desire, mm -hmm. your vision, then there's going to be disappointments. There are going to be some hiccups. But the thing is this, is just because you experience a, a loss doesn't mean you're a failure. Mm -hmm. Keep going after it. Keep trying just before you continue, yeah, Pastor, please, go ahead. I, just, I just want to mention to those that are listening via Streaming Praise Radio right now or, uh, or who are watching us on Facebook, this program is called Rebuilding the Black Family, and I know some of us may put a bit of a stigma to it or put some kind of a, you're talking about black folks alone, no, we're talking about everybody. But I want you to tell your friends, your neighbors, your enemies, and your frenemies to lock into Stream of Praise Radio. This is the time that every Tuesday you hear us right here on Stream of Praise Radio from 1 to 2. We discuss issues about the black family, and black family is a large family. It doesn't mm -hmm. include like the, the color of your skin. Um, it's a large thing, and if you really study it, you'll understand that the black family includes everybody. Um, and this is something that I want you guys to do. Tell your neighbors, your enemies, your frenemies, your family, your, your, whoever. Lock in at this time to get some truth. Pastor Carl is here. And uh, we, we're going to be opening up the phone lines uh, soon, e eventually. Um, right now we don't want to do that. Um, but we will be doing that where you can actually call in and have your questions answered. So we're setting that up just in case you're saying, how can I ask a question? Now, if you go on Facebook where the videos are being seen, where the live video is showing right now, you actually can post your statements or comments, whatever it is, right there. We can see it and we respond to it. All right? Excellent. Get back right back to you, Pastor. Fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate that. So um, we said just before, so losing doesn't mean you're a failure. Mm -hmm. So that's for everybody out there. You might have experienced a setback. But you know what? Get back up and get after it. If, that's, if that vision, that dream if it fills your heart, that's what you see yourself doing, then get after it. Don't be set back. Don't let go just because of a disappointment. Another point we saw in that movie was a dream will take time. So it's going to take time. Nothing's going to usually is never instant. And so there's normally not such a thing as instant success. It's mm -hmm. going to take some time. All right? Mm -hmm. Then um, if you fail, don't give up. Okay? Just be, Another thing is this, resist sinful practices and wrong people who will hinder you from, from moving in the direction of your dreams. Mm. So when you're moving in a certain direction of your, of your passion, of your dream, of your vision, there's going to be side roads, things to pull you off track. Mm -hmm. Could be well-meaning people. Well, you've got to stay focused on where you're going, if that's where you really want to go. Okay, but I'm just going to say, it's not going to be easy all the time, and there are going to be distractions. Things will come, temptations will come, wrong people will come, other opportunities will come to get you off track, but I'm telling you, you've got to stay on track. Um, another one is this, so um, be grateful for where you came, come from. That's important. That's a real big factor. So never forget where you came from. Never forget the people who helped you get where you got. For example, in that movie, the mother, this is a good one, the, um, Fiona's mom um, was faced with a temptation. Mm -hmm. Remember, she's a single mother. Right. So a merchant, you might have seen this part, so there's a merchant, he's a, he, he owns a, a pretty large establishment, and I believe he sells uh, fine linen and different stuff like that. And so he offers the mother to take her to a hotel mm -hmm. and dinner, actually tells her. Right. Now she knows, in the back of her mind, if she goes with him, that's going to change her family. Mm -hmm. Because now she'll be taken by this man, and who knows if he's going to love her children. Her children. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that, that was a pivotal part in mm -hmm. the movie. She loved her children and what, they, what she wanted for them mm -hmm. more than maybe a selfish dream, a selfish vision. Mm -hmm. Sure, she had desires, but her love for her children trumped all of that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. And so yeah. she made sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Also, Robert, the coach, he, had, he was an engineer, I believe. Right. He had a job offer. It took a long time. He had a job offer. Now, he could have gone to that company, could have been making way more money in a better situation than he was presently in. But he, he said no to the position. Why? In his heart, he was doing what he felt he was called, mm -hmm. which was to help children. And, so, and you know what I noticed, though? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the things that you're called to do pay less than what you want to do because of the, the, the finances that come to. So 
pretty much is following your heart's desire and dreams because there's more of a success in that or more fulfillment mm -hmm. in that when you when you do that so whatever you get in payment is more satisfying than if you were to go somewhere else which is paying you the big bucks mm -hmm. and you're not satisfied well the thing is this is making if you follow your dream mm -hmm. what will happen sooner or later the money will come mm -hmm. the problem is if we follow the money first and then you sacrifice your dream and that's why many people in north america they're they're disappointed or they're they're um, um not very happy even in their positions why many of them are doing what they don't want to do correct so they're doing work what they don't want to do mm -hmm. why because it was all about the money and i'm not saying money's not important don't get me wrong on that oh, yeah, money but is the thing is it's, it's very important to follow and cultivate mm -hmm. your dream your vision your passion don't let uh, be grateful where you came from. Don't let your present circumstances stop you from dreaming or cause you to stop your children from dreaming. Hmm. So in her case, what's this thing about chess? What's that going to do? Get, don't do that. See? So she, just because of the maybe seemingly insignificance of chess or being overwhelmed by present circumstances, okay. she eventually started you know, fostering Fiona's desire to pursue chess. So again, it's very important that we we don't, um, um, where's my point? I'm sorry, I missed it there. Hold it. Oh, there it is. So don't let your present circumstances stop you from dreaming or cause you to stop your children from dreaming. It takes the sacrifice of many for one to realize their dreams. That's another one. So in that movie, the mother made sacrifices. Robert and his family made sacrifices. That's why there's no such thing as a self-made per person. Yeah. You see that? We, yeah, Normally there was somebody yeah. or there's individuals who got behind you, who loved you, who believed in you mm -hmm. enough to help you move forward. And so that's why it's so important as you do realize success as a result of pursuing your passion, your dream, your vision, it's very important that you be very grateful for where you came from. Don't snub your nose at where you came from. Amen. Does that make sense? Yep. I think about my dad says that from Jamaica. He says, you know, there's, uh, there's people who they go back to the islands, they look down on the people where they came, came from, from, the very yeah. people they came mm -hmm. from. Well, that's pride and arrogance. We've really got to guard that. Mm -hmm. You see Absolutely, that? Because yeah. the only thing is that you got an opportunity to come out and be better, and sometimes those people didn't have the opportunity. So be very careful. Be very grateful for where you came from. Um, let me come down. I'll make this real quick here. Don't let your present circumstances stop you from dreaming. I already said that. I'm sorry. Um, let us be individuals and people who help others realize their dreams. Hmm. So the thing is this. As, you're, as you move in your dream, as you move in your passion, then the thing is this. It's not just about you, but you find more and more I find myself is this. You want to help people discover their dream. And fulfill their dream and passion. Does that make sense? You don't. Yeah. You don't want. You don't want to be someone who holds people back. Mm -hmm. you, you have a certain spirit of liberty where you want to have. Help see, you want to see more and more people rejoice in the fulfillment of their God-given talents, dreams, and vision. See, some, so you become a cheerleader yeah. for other people. Yeah, right, because right. some some of us don't want to do that because we're afraid that they become better than we mm -hmm. are, and therefore we again go back to the dream stealing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but it, it it is important that um, when you help someone to become what they are to become, it also helps you. That's right. That's it, right. I, I've noticed that if you help someone to become what they are to become, it helps you to become a better person, mm -hmm. helps you to think differently. Mm -hmm. It even helps you to even um, create your pathway and where you really want to go because you may find that, hmm, I'm good at this. Maybe mm -hmm. I need to mm -hmm. go and help mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, where you thought you're supposed to be, you're somewhere else much better and much better, right. feel much better a as you go along. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, so don't be sorry in the movie when is, uh, Robert turns down the position, so a lucrative position in another town, turns down the position, and he has to tell his wife. Ooh. Tells his wife. I didn't reach that you know, far, but I'm looking you know his, forward to it. You know, you know what his wife, his wife says? I'm sorry, I'm really... Spo no, spoiler no, alert. No, no, you no, can no, just turn no, down no, your mind. No, yeah. You know what he, she says? She says, don't be... She was so surprised at his is hesitance in telling her. Mm -hmm. or is, um, he wasn't disappointed. He knew 
he was where he wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't weeping over saying no to that job, mm -hmm. but he was concerned about maybe disappointing her. Mm -hmm. Her response was this quote, don't be sorry for doing what's right. Wow. So she was, you know, they, right they, they embraced after. Oh, yeah, because, you know, in other words, this is in your heart. You know you're where you're supposed to yeah. be. You're doing what you want to do. So she was an encourager. And I think more and more we need to be encouragers. You know why I said, wow, because at the beginning when she told him, are you back playing soccer again for money? Mm -hmm. You know, and she went on about this. But I'm so sorry, but 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 I'm so sorry. So that's that's really powerful. That's a real twister there. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I like that. But she was so supportive mm -hmm. because she knew what was in his heart. And you know that's important. Um, you know, with having the right partner supporting you in the walk or the call or mm -hmm. whatever it is, mm -hmm. whether God mm -hmm. called you to do something, whether there's a passion in you that God put in you to do, and you have the right partner standing and says, hey. I'm backing you, I'm that's supporting right. you, I'm bracing mm -hmm. you with mm -hmm. this one. Let's do this together. Yeah. That's important. Well, that's, that's the important. principle of agreement. Yes. Our, you know, scripture says in Amos 3, 8, how can two walk together unless, unless they, they be in agreement? Matthew 18, yeah. if two of you shall agree on earth concerning anything they shall ask, it shall be done. Yeah. So once there's a, a specific vision and dream and that uh, you and your spouse come together, well, you're unstoppable then because yes. you've got the power of agreement. Yes. See, that's, that's really important. So again, let's be encouragers. Uh, be one of those who really inspires and encourages and really wants to see the success of friends, family, neighbors, those people that God has brought you around to be an encourager to. Um, pursuing and fulfilling your dream will inspire others. You said that. You alluded to that. It will inspire others. Are we, we're coming close to our yeah, time. Yeah, we're coming oh close goodness, to it. Oh, my goodness. We're about to hurry up here. We'll be having fun. I didn't realize. Yeah, sure. lose really quickly. Never, never forget. I said this before, but uh, amplifying it. Never forget where you came from and those who sacrificed for you. Never forget. Now, think about it. You, you said something, but I thought about this. Now, imagine those um, individuals in um, the Queen of Katwe. Mm -hmm. Do you think they imagined they would be on in a movie? that would be seen all over the world? Never in a million years. Look at that. that. See, that's the power of a dream, yeah. is that you never know how many people you could impact potentially. Absolutely. Isn't that amazing? Or your children. You never know what your, your faithfulness, your love for your children, you, never, you don't know where they could be in the future mm -hmm. and how that can change your future. I mean, real quick, parents never give up on your children. That's another point I wrote. Never give up on your parents, your children. No matter what they're going through right now, they might not be the ve you know acting the very best, but never give up on them. You know, yes, correct them, do what you've got to do, encourage whatever, but never give up on them. Somehow, let them know I still believe in you, I, I still love you. You're still, you're still the best. You're still going to fulfill the very best and the highest purpose for which God made you. You've got to something. So be, continue to be their inspiration and inspire them, even through discipline, even through instruction, even through the correction you've got to administer in their lives if they're still living with you. you know, but be that encourager. Never give up on them. Another one. Your children must dream. Hear this, folks. Your children must dream so that your life and that of future generations will be changed permanently and forever. Mm -hmm. The end of the movie, Fiona's mom gets into, they take her to this place, she doesn't know where to go, and come out of the car, stand in front of a house, mm -hmm. and they said, what is this? And they said, this is our new home, mm -hmm. in a new area, a new neighborhood. How did that come to pass? Through one person, Fiona. Yep. The rewards that came through chess, through her dream, mm -hmm. what did it do? Changed her family. Wow. Which means it would change their future. Uh, 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 I know you, you got a couple more. No, I don't. That's it. I'm yeah, done. It, that's it. We got just about so, so five minutes. That to means go. it will be changed forever, permanently. Permanently. Their life has changed forever. 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 And and folks, just to give you a little bit of a tidbit about um, the movie, it's called Queen of Katwe. Queen of Katwe. Go ahead and get the movie. How? I, don't worry about how I get it. Mm -hmm. You go out and get the movie. I can buy them. You know, you can get it. You can, it from you can yeah. down. I think you can down pay. I think it's three dollars uh, if you look at YouTube and you get it from there. And 
folks got different sources of getting movies these days, right? But if you go out and look at the movies, very encouraging, very inspiring. Um, Just get it legally, please. Yeah. And if you need to pay for the, the legal copy, yeah. do that. You know, do don't that. be a pirate. We don't want it. We're not, you know, I'm not back in that industry. So let's be careful. Yeah. All right. So, you know, but I said to somebody yesterday, I said, don't worry about it. I got the movie. I got it. Look, you do. Okay. Yeah, so, but the thing is, it's a really, really uh, interesting movie. The way it started, uh, as I said, for me, it took me back mm -hmm. when I was there in Kenya, which is similar to, to mm -hmm. Uganda. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and, and I just thought of their beginnings. Most of the time, their beginnings mm -hmm. compared to our beginnings mm -hmm. is a vast difference. They work twice as hard or sometimes ten times as hard as we do, but yet they make it. And mm -hmm. why is it that we can't? And we don't have such a strain as they mm -hmm. do. So, but that I, should inspire us. Then either we're not putting the the necessary effort, correct? Right, the diligence, the hard work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are just plain lazy. True. You see, and Very so, true. Uh, and let me close by saying this: our scripture for the day. Yes. Scripture for the day, because that movie was about hope, mm -hmm. about determination, about courage. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. I know many, many of you out there would know it. I know the thoughts. Yes. I know the dreams I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for good, not evil. Mm -hmm. To give you a future and a hope. Why does God put you uh, put visions and dreams inside of you? Things that you keep thinking about even when you try to get rid of it. It still comes up at night, still throughout the day. Because he put a dream inside of you. And that's part of him putting his dream in you. So that you can realize the bigness of the future that he has for you. So again, Jeremiah 29, 11, God's plans, his thoughts for you are good, not evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now, oh. yeah, I, go ahead, I guess please. in closing, um, as we're coming down to the close, I, I wanted to say this about the movie, and I thank you for sharing it with me. Um, because it's 17 years streaming praise has been going through this. Oh, wow. Right? And... Um, in the 17th year, we were able to acquire the TV channel. Excellent. Right? Congratulations. And in acquiring the TV channel, and we're now developing that just as I developed, uh, we, we tried to develop the radio station. And again, as you said, I didn't do this by myself. I had help along the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, I, have, I still have Janelle and, 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 uh, and Carl, I was about to say Brother Benji, but we know him as Brother Benji, that's mm -hmm. his radio name, um, stuck with me. And they were always there to... Fantastic. To, to help me go through, uh, go over the hump, so to speak. And today's show especially, and I watched it this morning, I'm like, oh, this is inspiring, this is, this is uplifting. I got up and thinking to myself, the first thing I got up and I thought was of the show today, mm -hmm. the radio station, is everything working fine, you know, and my thoughts go there. And I will turn on my little thing next to my bed head and check to make sure everything is going fine. And then the thought came back to me, if that's the first thing you thought about in the morning, you, you're doing the right thing. And I'm thinking, if I'm doing the right thing, how come I don't feel the way I ought to feel? Mm -hmm. So got myself ready, get, you know, getting ready to do what I got to do and recognize that. Saw the movie and realized, wow, this is inspiring. So I'm in the right spot. You are. Excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Just before we go, can I just, again, yeah. please yeah. support Streaming Praise Radio. Tell your friends in Canada, the United States, in Africa, India, China, wherever your friends are, in Europe, tell them about Streaming Praise, tune into the programs. If you're an advertiser, contact Claremont. If you would like your program, an idea you'd like to put on this station, then please call Claremont. Until next week, this is Rebuilding the Black Family, and God's plans are great for you. Thank you for joining us today on Rebuilding the Black Family with Pastor Carl Lewis and myself, Claremont Humphrey. We trust you found this program helpful. Please give us your feedback on our Facebook page, Foundation for Life Church. Also, visit us at foundationforlife.ca where you will find some free life-building resources. Join us next time for another edition of Rebuilding the Black Family. Until then, build your life and family on the sure foundation of Jesus Christ.